the Didiot Cook and Gillian Tilden, who uh, work from, for Blackboard. And without further ado, um, let's start the, our second session in this afternoon. Thank you very much, Maria. And thank you, Dan. That was really interesting. I, I could have carried on listening to that for, for a lot longer and not talked, but um, yeah, as we've done some work, I feel we should, and we've been invited to, then I feel we should. So thank you. I'm here with my colleague, Hervé, today. Uh, if you haven't met us before, we are client experience managers from Blackboard. So we work with our customers after they've bought the products to help them get more out of the products. And what we're going to share today is some evidence that we, we listen, uh, we learn, and we help. Um, and that we share back in the theme of some of the early topics from today uh, of open education and so on, that we share things back. So uh, Hervé and I are going to share the speaking in this session. Um, if you could post any questions in the chat, that would be great. If you could switch your microphone off if you're not speaking, that would be helpful and reduce background noise. Um, there's a hint because I can hear some in my ears. <laughs> I don't know who it is, but if you could just turn it off, that'd be great. Um, um, I'm going to use the feedback tools, I think now just at one point, because I've just reduced what I'm going to speak about in my head, which will access those through the head and shoulder icon or the green tick at the bottom. Um, and you can give us some feedback. And I also want you to point out that you can privately chat to each other as well, just by clicking on the ellipse after their name in the uh, chat panel and then send a private chat message to somebody. But just be aware the moderators can see what you're saying. But you might want to post something that's not going to impact on everybody. Um, so, yeah, we all know that uh, digital education has risen enormously and from our end at Blackboard obviously we can see all the data and in March you know we saw a phenomenal increase September we saw it increase even higher in terms of online learning platforms the use of you know our products like learn and collaborate collaborate has seen a 9,000 percent increase this year and mobile devices we've seen a 60 uh, 60 increase they got that wrong um, <clears throat> And some of the things that we are doing to try and help you, you know, and a lot of these resources are open so you can repurpose them, is I'm just going to highlight some. Um, in March, we started running training webinars to help you get those um, instructors or academics who've, who've ne never really used the technologies before or some that wanted to raise their level of use of engagement. We have, and Herve is going to post the links to these. Uh, we ran about 11 different topics, including assessments and mobile and just getting started um, webinars. And th those are carrying on into the new year. There's lots of free resources like accessibility checklists, um, uh, best practice guidelines, guides about moving teaching online. There's a whole wealth of resources there. Um, and also, we, you know, we just recently we ran a, a webinar on running best practice in running synchronous hybrid teaching webinars. Um, which again, you know, we've made the recording available, the slides available, so you can repurpose them and, and we can try and help you out there. Um, so Herve, I'm gonna let you speak for a minute. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Gillian. And what we try to do as well is uh, work closely with uh, some uh, universities. So Brunel needed help in order to, to create a course for uh, the Nightingale uh, uh, Hospital. So this was back in March. Uh, there was a huge need in terms of uh, critical care skills and, you know, how to deliver this, um, these courses very quickly, very efficiently when you have a pool of trainers which are available but uh, these uh, members of staff expert members of staff are uh, remotely based or uh, on maternity leave or not being able you know uh, probably uh, having uh, some clinical health conditions so they cannot teach in a normal or train staff in a normal setting however thanks to uh, online delivery uh, they can uh, they can help um, um, other NHS uh, professionals 
So we worked uh, really, really hard uh, and to help uh, Brunel University and um, a small, um, not a small, a healthcare uh, a company to design uh, to design a course. And for those who are, you know, familiar uh, with a higher, you know, a higher education uh, environment, you um, uh, often you have. Um, uh, um, a system which is managed uh, for your students' um, uh, information system. So it's locking, uh, preventing you from accepting uh, external students. So what we offered was uh, uh, an extension which allow a university to enroll um, external uh, students onto, uh, onto their VLE. So this is what we also uh, offered uh, to, uh, to Brunel and to these Nightingale um, uh, hospital then uh, the staff who were interested were able to choose and enroll self enroll for uh, a course they were given immediate access to a VLE, uh, a VLE uh, uh, platform and then uh, uh, an online you know um, a, a virtual classroom with uh, collaborate as well as of course a series of uh, online task activities and uh, an exercise and once they completed this one day course they would uh, they would uh, and all the activities they would receive uh, uh, a certificate so this is what we 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 did with uh, Brunel um, uh, University but also we spent um, a lot of time last year to listen to um, our community so like many uh, many uh, uh, suppliers you know we spent a lot of time uh, listening to system administrators to learning technologists um, when they share you know their views in, in user group and uh, community of practice we also listen to academics and particularly with as we mentioned in the abstract you know we listen to innovative academics who are pushing their own academic subject boundaries to research and implement various pedagogical approach, approaches to ensure student success. And uh, Gillian, will, we will show, we will share some uh, amazing work done by these uh, by these um, uh, academics. And uh, throughout uh, throughout 2020, what we did probably for the first time as a company is that we systematically listened to students. Uh, across you know uh, national settings europe and wide we got we always run you know every year uh, a big uh, a european conference and also uh, some uh, some global uh, events we even set up a, a, a students advisory uh, uh, council and in may 2020 in fact uh, hundreds of us listened to piers wilkinson so piers uh, was at the time the disabled students officer for uh, the national union of uh, of students and he depicted you know the, the painful situation faced by thousands of students in the, in the UK, including disabled students. So he shared with us a, a, a survey that the NUS uh, um, conducted uh, 10,000 students uh, answered that survey and uh, something like 79% uh, you know couldn't uh, uh, agree more with the statement you know that because of the changes to my academic work, online teaching and assessment, the COVID-19 situation is negatively impacting my study. So this resonated with uh, with uh, with us back uh, back in May, and you know. Uh, I personally wasn't aware, you know, but that you know, disabled students uh, were and have been disproportionately impacted by the move to online learning, losing uh, uh, the key support they receive uh, while on while it's on campus. You know, usually when they come on campus, there is a, there is a number of, of support staff to to help them. They faced hardware shortages as well as significant uh, technical difficulties with their hardware to access online uh, online provision. So just to conclude this uh, this slide, you know, and that was the conclusion uh, from uh, from Piers uh, back in May uh, 2020. He said, you know, that was really uh, time to uh, reassess ourselves. You know, the proud, you know, the the first uh, uh, thing to remember is that digital accessibility uh, is good practice for everyone, not just for. Uh, for in terms of disabled access to inclusive design is core to responding to COVID-19 uh, COVID and we'll come back to that in terms of inclusive design you know some universities are doing some amazing <coughs> stuff including the University of Kent and last but not least you know co-production 
co-integration co-inter- are the way um, um, are the way ahead. So that's that's um, that's my conclusion for this slide. Thank you, um, Gillian. Okay, and I'm going to just move on to talking about something else that we released uh, Blackboard pot. Uh, release available at the start of COVID that uh, is freely available for you to use now. Uh, Heather, can you just confirm we can see the Ally Transformer on screen? Yeah, it's perfect. Excellent. Um, And this is uh, publicly available. Heather will share the link to it. I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of it. Um, but this uh, will convert a file that anybody can use. We release it for students to uh, use, but staff can use it, the public can use it. Um, So I've got a Word document uh, as an example that you just upload it. Say you're not a robot, it might ask you for which institution you're from, but it doesn't validate. Um, It's just I've done it before, so it doesn't need to do. And then this will become available, you will see, in a variety of different formats here. So if you've not seen uh, what Ally can do, this is this is only a tiny part of what the Ally for LMS can do, but the Ally Transformer is available for people to use. We made it available for the duration of uh, the year uh, up to December, but I can tell you today that we're going to make it available uh, to the end of the academic year at least. Um, so students can, you know, if they find a file they want to convert to a different format, then they can just use this tool to pick the format they like. And I picked Beeline Reader because not everybody has seen that one, it's quite a new one. And you can see that. Um, the text is graduated across the line so that it makes easy reading easier your eye will follow the colors and the tones of the line and there are different preferences and you can also choose a dark background which stands out rather nicely there Um, there are other versions which i'm not going to demonstrate Uh, that you can download, you know, there was an EPUB version, an HTML version. We have seen a phenomenal increase in students downloading alternative formats throughout the pandemic. Um, So we know that these different formats are helpful for students. Um, So, yep, Hervé has shared that. Thank you very much. Um, And I will just to ask you a quick poll there using that feedback tool that I referenced earlier. Um, do you think the Ally Transformer is something that you will use or promote with your students? And it would be good if you could um, just respond by clicking the green tick and then saying agree or disagree. I'll just give you a few seconds. Gillian, you mentioned the Ally Transformer is available to all the black Blackboard platforms. Oh, thank you. I, I couldn't pick that. So it's available at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. It's publicly available for everyone. Um, that's a good question, Chris. It depends on. I'd have to uh, do a comparison to check that how it compares with. And we promote, you know, we do a lot of uh, say training and workshops on Ally, and we do suggest using whatever tools are available. So often the Ally um, accessibility checker and so on. But the immersive reader, I don't know, maybe somebody else on the call, Dan, or on our mics on here, maybe you've used it with the immersive reader to see whether that improves or not, so maybe somebody else can answer it, but I don't know the answer, Chris, but we'll come back to that. Um, So I just wanted to talk here about Galway, and they're uh, using Catherine uh, Cronin, who was speaking from the National Forum in Ireland, are using their open badges to aid their accessibility and inclusion work there, and they're delivering uh, a program on universal design for learning, which awards badges. Um, And the the whole program is freely available. You can just download the resources um, and plug it into your systems and deliver the course. And that's exactly what they've done at Galway. Um, So it it introduces the concept of UDL. obviously promotes the inclusivity and equity, future-proofs the teaching. Um, what they have come back with is obviously that the learners are reviewing their own teaching practice and updating that 
to give you an idea, it's 25 hours to get the UDL badge and the academics can choose to add on an extra five hour study and then get a facilitator's badge as well. It's been really successful at uh, Galway. They've just won it once so far um, over the last uh, few weeks. Um, but they've really been taken aback by the impact of what they describe as a light touch initiative. Um, and they really feel that it's changed teaching practices forever, which many of us that have been involved with accessible uh, accessibility training knows that it makes that big practice change for everyone. And um, Okay, just check how we're doing for time. Okay, um, so uh, another use case I just wanted to talk about was from the University of Aberdeen and uh, Neil McLennan here, who is the program leader for the online MSc in leadership in professional contexts. Um, the main point about this one is he has um, embedded a positive, a, the positive education approach that we see a lot in uh, South America and America, and we're increasingly seeing that approach in the UK. Um, you know, you can Google uh, positive education. Uh, he's been building that into his teaching, and part of the reason was he took over the program, did a review but he knows it's online learning we know that can be an isolating experience but also it's leadership which again people in leadership roles can be quite isolated so he really wanted to build in good practice and well-being into his program so he has embedded that positive education and, and practical things that he's done is, is in, he's created uh, thematic rooms within the course. So uh, where like there's a, what the Scottish, anybody who's Scottish on the call will know that HEDIS are head teachers in Scotland. Um, they've got a HEDIS office where the head teachers can discuss with other head teachers and other leaders uh, topics that are difficult for them to discuss under Chatham House rules, so they don't go outside the course. But a head teacher who's running a school might not want to discuss that with their local educational authority. Um, so he's built it into the course where they have this um, space to have those discussions. Um, and he's, uh, there are other thematic discussion rooms as well that he's created, which has felt that it's really reduced isolation and shared uh, their practice in what they're doing. And plus, he's set up coaching groups as well, which also helps to make a very supportive environment which you know we know are very important at this particular time oops i'm not going to talk about banger given the time we've got but i'm just going to say as well just that you know digital well-being across the sector it, we've we've seen spoken about already um you know this i've just screenshotted some apps that different uh, universities have created but internally at blackboard as well we have this year started another uh, a, a well-being initiative for staff and I've just put some of the things the examples that we're doing to share with you you know where we have meetings we're not necessarily starting on the hour but starting at five past or quarter past and just making it a shorter meeting to give us those gra gaps so we can just get up and stretch our legs and make a drink um, taking breaks if we're doing workshops or events and we're telling people we're having a break at this point because it's very important for you to move about physically or chat with each other other um ask people how they're doing and to be kind and to be tolerant in these online environments uh, like martin's got an animated gift we have one that says you know please remember to be kind to people that in difficult circumstances we're all working under um providing additional equipment for home working ensuring good sound and lighting so that it's less of a strain you know if you go into a classroom you make sure your environment is is conducive to good learning using the pointer tools she says using the pointer tool um, checking the audience sentiment seeing how they're feeling whether they're happy setting the etiquette at the start um, and so on so i'm going to uh just jump and I'm going to feed back to Hervé. Do you want to finish off with the UNESCO story, Hervé? Yes, so um, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. G Can you hear me? Yeah. Can Just try it again. Your audio had gone crackly. One, two, three, one, two, three. Is it good? Mm, just tell us the story and let's see how we go on. It's bearable. 
Okay, so uh, uh, we listened to a panel about uh, open education. You know, Sorry, Herve, it's, it's gone too bad. So we will take any questions at this point. Um, if anybody has got any questions, we have, I think, one minute left to take those. Sorry, I had to meet you, Herve. <laughs> Yeah, very good. Thank you, P. Gillian, because it's, uh, we need to finish by 20 past 20. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, no, I think it has been really useful, and I didn't know about the Blackboard Ally Transformer. So, uh, thank you very much for that tip, uh, which the past two colleagues. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic. It makes a big difference. I think, and it seems there are not uh, further questions, it's now 4.20, so I want to thank, and also you want to send a, a virtual uh, clap, as uh, Marin said this morning, to our speakers for this double session today, to Dan, Gillian, and Herve. Um, thank you for these two, two sessions, which uh, brought us a, a lot of ideas and good principles to put in practice in our teaching. Also, thank you to, to Martin and the ALT team, uh, as usual, working really hard to have the Winter Online Conference. Um, and I think uh, we'll see you around. We will see in other sessions. Um, thank you very much. Thanks to the participants.